Due to my career, I've traveled a lot in my life, so this journey shouldn't be a big deal, right? But it is. This time, it's all different. It feels different, thanks to the mixture of anxiety and anticipation permeating everything. The anticipation, I feel, is quite special, like a gift given by a friend wrapped like Russian dolls, each layer of gift wrap an obstacle to be torn away to reveal the present waiting inside. My anxiety, however, is at an all-time high. With my wife and kids accompanying me, the length of our stay being longer than ever, and this special situation due to COVID-19, I don't think it's that strange to feel this way. The strict regulations include COVID tests taken before and after the flight, a three-day quarantine in a hotel, another 11-day quarantine in a previously selected accommodation, and logging possible symptoms on the Arrive Can app every single day. It's a lot to handle, but there isn't much of a choice. You do what you gotta do. The plane is in the air, and those passengers moving around have settled. Everyone is busy doing something. My wife is practicing her English. My son seems to be in his childhood world of fantasy, and other passengers are experiencing the present in their own ways. I, however, am still drowned in my own anxiety and anticipation, tracing the flight path from my motherland to this unfamiliar one. 9,428 kilometers of flight distance and almost a 15-hour flight coming to its end too quickly. Hello Canada, the land of the maple. We're finally here, Trudeau International Airport, Montreal. Despite what I planned and expected, it was impossible to shoot and film in the airport's immigration section. Instead, I had to answer officers' questions, and I didn't even have any time to film. After claiming our checked luggage, it was time for the post-arrival COVID-19 test. It was much simpler than I thought, Simple, regulated, and fast. Right after the test, we headed for the hotel we were supposed to spend three of our 14 days in quarantine. Outside the airport terminal, we were greeted by tons of cabs eager to transport us there. Our first experience with weather was beautiful spring rain and cool breezes of Montreal. The weather was not jarring, only a few degrees colder than Tehran. Finally, 
After navigating through wide highways and streets, we arrived at the hotel we had booked. At the hotel, nobody could help us with our luggage because there were so many COVID-19 restrictions. I have to admit that even if we didn't have to quarantine, this three-day rest was welcome and much needed after a long journey. We took advantage of this opportunity and considered it a short break before starting our new life. Every day, our meals were delivered to our room by hotel staff. They would place a tray right in front of our door for us to pick it up. We were allowed a few 15 minute breaks to go outside every day. However, we couldn't even leave the hotel property. When our COVID-19 tests were confirmed negative three days later, we finally left the hotel and went on to complete our quarantine in the temporary accommodation we'd rented before. During the remaining 11 days of quarantine, the Arrive Can app asked me to submit a brief report of my family's health every single day. Ticking through this checklist was my obligatory daily routine. The last phase of screening was the at-home COVID test. We'd been given the kit when we left the airport, and on the 10th day of quarantine, we had to register online and take the test under the supervision of a nurse, and then send the swabs to the lab. The process took almost five hours from the moment of registration to the moment it was my family's turn to swab. These two weeks, and particularly the last few days, were very boring, but there was no getting around it. But we made the best of it. Our journey to the land of the maple is ongoing. In the following episodes, we're going to experience this new Canadian life together. What we all must remember is, a ship in harbour is safe. But that is not what ships are built for.